Did you ever see Chronicle about those teens who gained superpowers? Well, the Norwegian thriller The Innocents shares a similar vein, but then goes way darker. Should you check it out? During the bright Nordic summer, a group of children reveals their dark and mysterious powers when the adults aren't looking, and then playtime takes a dangerous turn. So this isn't a brand new film, but one that was recommended to me. And at the moment, it's available to rent at places like Amazon or Apple. Now, I'm a massive fan of the found footage movie Chronicle. I love how the special effects are utilized to enhance this story of teens who acquire some crazy powers. Well, in The Innocents, we are now watching four fairly young children with powers, but we don't know how they got them. And I think it's safe to assume that they just kind of have them rather than being acquired through some external force. And really, how they got them isn't really the point of the story, so it's fairly inconsequential. This is a quiet but unsettling film. There are four main kids we meet and follow, but with two of them, we get more insight into their lives. Anna and Ida are sisters, where Anna is the eldest, but she's nonverbal and on the autism spectrum. Ida is not a kind sister. From the opening scene, we get a glimpse into the moral defects that Ida has, as she will pinch her sister just extremely hard, looking for some kind of reaction. But because Anna is nonverbal and has difficulty expressing herself, Ida gets away with it. Now, the family is moving into this large apartment housing complex, and one day Ida meets a boy playing outside named Ben. Now, Ben is also quiet and has this air about him that is semi-creepy, but when we first meet him, the reasoning is ill-defined. It's just this feeling we get from his presence. Ida also meets another young girl named Aisha, and they also hit it right off. Through some discussions, the kids discover that the others can do weird things with their minds. Now, maybe it's communicating without speaking out loud, or it's controlling the environment, like making branches break or move things around without touching them. And when Anna is with them, she is also shown to have an ability. Now, when we find a group of kids that discover that they have powers, I imagine that they try all sorts of stuff just to see what they can do. And they do that, but in a much more twisted way than I had imagined. The film examines how loneliness, unhappiness, and even jealousy can corrupt thoughts and then behaviors. This creates a tone for the story that is oppressive and tense, but also wildly uncomfortable because the subjects we're following are so young. I mean, we typically imagine innocence when we see young kids, thus the name for the movie, but that's not always how they turn out. The cinematography in this is very beautiful, with a lot of shots that begin with soft focus, and then as the camera pans around a subject, the full frame comes into focus. And the use of sunlight is also wonderful, as it will illuminate and create a sense of pureness on certain characters and even situations, but it also serves to overexpose the shots, showing the starkness and harshness of an experience or maybe a feeling. There's not a ton of dialogue in this, so a lot is filled with score or natural sounds. Now, the actors do speak, and they convey emotion through their words effectively, but because there is such sparse dialogue, a lot of the tone is reliant on the expressions and body language of the characters. While this is mainly a thriller, there are some horror aspects to it, most of them psychological in nature. Now, as the story works towards the climax, the situations become more dire and then horrific, with a building sense of urgency and dread. There are sparing uses of special effects in this, but they're awesomely crafted. Because we're watching kids with powers, we witness the effects of the use of the powers without the kids actually having to touch anything. So maybe a branch is going to snap, or the water on a lake will ripple with force, or maybe a bone will be snapped. Each time, these are pretty flawless in their execution. I mean, for a smaller film like this, you'd expect maybe some wonky effects, but these are done so well that it's hard to believe any effects are actually at play. This is just at about two hours, and it does feel a bit long, mainly because the entire film is pretty quiet in its execution. But even though you might feel the time a little, as the story progresses, especially towards the finale, it feels like we are careening towards a cliff of disaster. Now, the pace still retains the same deliberate path it had the whole way through, but because we've spent two-thirds of the story building out our characters and investing us in them, when the crap hits the fan in the final act, I mean, it's palpable and exciting, and then also squirm-inducing. Now, there was one portion of this film that I could have done completely without. An animal is tortured, and I wish the story would have just used the setup, because we clearly know what's going to happen, and then it could have given a brief understanding of the resolution. But instead, we get this drawn-out scene, which honestly, I had to mute the audio, and then I looked away. I was only peering up every now and again just to see when it was done. I mean, that portion almost made me turn off the movie because it just didn't need to be shown to that degree. But that disturbing scene aside, the story has this insane ability to suck me in, despite it being a quiet tale. The young actors do an amazing job of giving us a variety of emotions, each very distinct and unmistakable. The tension that is built is engaging, but it's also disturbing. 
And even though I think the progression of the story is predictable, there were still surprises and actions that I didn't expect, which gave me an even larger appreciation for the narrative. If you're looking for something to unsettle you, but in the best way possible, and you want a fairly unique premise, you may want to give it a chance. I certainly think it is worth the rental price and may even haunt you for a bit. There's no sex or nudity, a little bit of profanity, and then a ton of horrific violence. I give The Innocence four out of five couches. Now I want to give it an even higher rating, but that animal scene, it was just too much for me. So what's a good thriller you've seen lately? Anything you can recommend, even if it is a bit older? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this review, please give it a like. Also, don't forget to share and subscribe. I'm Chris. This is Movies and Munchies. Thanks for couching with